हेलो फ्रेंड्स नाउ आई विल डिस्कस ए शेड्यूलिंग एल्गोरिदम इज कॉल्ड राउंड रॉबिन शेड्यूलिंग एल्गोरिदम इट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट शेड्यूलिंग एल्गोरिदम इन करेंट सिनेरियो इमिली टूडेज कंप्यूटर्स इज जस्ट बेस्ड ऑन द राउंड रॉबिन शेड्यूलिंग एल्गोरिदम द नेम ऑफ द राउंड राउंड रॉबिन शेड्यूलिंग एल्गोरिदम इज जस्ट बेस्ड ऑन इस राउंड समथिंग इज राउंड मीन्स रिपीट अगेन एंड अगेन मीन्स ए प्रोसेस execute some time and again repeat its repetition again next process will just repeat the same thing and the next process will repeat the same thing until we execute all the processes this is the scenario of the round robin scheduling algorithm for the electrical or electronic students i am just explaining there is a entity is called process whenever we work any work in computer then there is a need of process some uh, for example if we play a song this is also a process if we work on the ms file this is also a process so each and every work in i computer is a process so this is called a process and now uh, in every process we have to ex we have a processor which execute that process so we have two entity in computer one entity is processor and one entity is called process process resides in the main memory and just after the main memory process goes to the cpu and execute the process process goes to the cpu and execute the process and then we then we will will see the result so there is a entity is called process process each program in running state is called process and one entity is called processor processor this is a execution engine which finally execute that work or that process simply for the electrical and the electronics student this is a simple phenomena i am describing there are two entities one entity is called process and the one entity is called processor so this entity will goes in processor and then processor will execute the output okay so this and when where we place processes is called ready queue or circular queue so the place where these all processes will resides called ready queue so there is a entity is called ready queue so i am writing ready queue okay so all the processes resides in this ready queue p1 p2 p3 p4 all are process and p1 is a process p2 is a process p3 is a process p4 is a process and all processes are waiting for its running its execution it's waiting for the its cpu for its cpu so simply in round robin scheduling algorithm in round robin scheduling algorithm process p1 execute first and then context switch from the processor and now the next process p2 run on the cpu and again this p2 context switch from the processor and it will happen again and again in a round fashion in round fashion so this is the scenario where we call it round robin so there is a phenomena is called quantum each round robin algorithm is based on quantum quantum is a time slice so for example quantum time equal to 2 unit means every process will execute 2 unit in processor and then we context switch that process okay so this is the simple phenomena simple there is a room and i will go in the room for 2 hours and then i will out and after the another person will go in that room for 2 hours and just that person will go out so this is the sharing time each and every processor will goes will run for the 2 unit or the app processor will assign to each processes by a two unit and then the process will context switch and the next process will be calling so this is the scenario of the quantum time so there is a definition of quantum time 
I'm writing a problem on the board. There is a, some processes called P0, P1, P2, P3, P4 and the arrival time on processor is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and the worst time 5, 3, 1, 2, 3. Worst time means execution time. How much a process will take to execute in a processor is called worst time. And now the next term is called turn around time TAT and now the next term is called WT waiting time. So don't worry about that terms. I will explain in clearly that what is my turnaround time and what is my waiting time. Okay. So first of all, come to the philosophy of round roaming. How do you so how just solve your numerical in the fashion of round robin? So I'm giving the detail. I'm giving the detail of round robin. For the round robin, you have to always. For the round robin, we have to always focus on quantum time. So my quantum time here for that problem, my quantum time is two unit. Okay. So just start. First of all, at the time zero, because every time is start from zero. At the time zero, I'm taking a processor process P zero with worst time five. But this process will execute only two unit because my quantum is two unit. So my quantum is two unit. So in the ready queue, in the circular queue, so I have to maintain a circular queue where all process will placed. So I have to maintain a circular queue P0. And from this P0, this queue, I will take process P0 in CPU, process P0 in CPU. And this P0, I am making a Gantt chart. And this P0 will execute only 2 unit. So 0 to 2. After 2 unit time, I will context switch that process. Because the time of that process is over. Your sharing time is over. So I will context switch that P0. Okay. So first of all, place in the circular queue, place in circular queue, pick from the circular queue, put in the giant chart, take the quantum time, just see that quantum time and just see the worst time and according to the worst time and quantum time, you just mark the number here because first of time, my worst time is 5 but quantum time is 2. So I will execute 2 on the 5. On the 5 scale, I will execute only 2. So, when I'll, I will execute 2, the remaining is 3. So, remember that there is a very important point is called remaining. Okay. So, remaining. But, when there is a 2 in my clock, at the 2, process P1 is also arrived and process P2 is also arrived. So, at the time 2, at the time 2, Process P0, P1 is also arrived at the time 1 and the process P2 is also arrived at the time 2. Remember that situation. Okay. So at the time 2, my circular queue, so all the waiting process will go to the circular queues. Remember that. So at the time 2, P1 is also in circular queue and P2 is also in circular queue. Okay. But at the same time 2, at the same time too, I just remove the P0 from the processor. Remember that. For the same time too, whenever there is a 2 in my clock, at my clock, I will remove this P0 from the processor and again P0 will be in circular queue and waiting for the next time. Next time. So waiting for the next time. Before going to Next time, there is a order is P1 and P2. Then P0 will go to the processor. So this is a simple philosophy. So this is very important philosophy, P1, P2, P0. Now the next term is P1, come to P1 and assign to the processor and cut here. And again I am saying P1, pick the P1, cut here, goes to the giant chart, put here. And come to the P1 and see arrival time is 1, arrival time is 1 and the worst time is 3. 
so arrival time is 1 there is no meaning because already there is a quantum is 2 2 has already done so at the 2 p1 is also available in the circular queue but p1 will execute only 2 unit out of 3 because there is 3 worst time means I can execute I want 3 unit time but quantum allow only 2 unit time so quantum allows only 2 unit I have 3 unit so 2 out of 3 so 2 out of 3 means 2 to 4 and if uh, p1 execute 2 units remaining will be 1 remaining will be 1 so that is very important funda very important points is called remaining always just remember the remaining what is your remaining and what is your actual quantum so now the my time in my clock is 4 at the 4 4 o'clock I have also p3 I have also p4 so at the 4 4 o'clock p3 process p3 process is also there p4 process is also there in circular queue so because the p1 is in p1 is in giant chart or process processor so remove the p1 here and p2 be up just after the 4 o'clock i will remove p1 but at a 4 o'clock p3 is also here p4 is also here in circular queue and just remove the p1 from the giant chart because after the 4 we will remove the p1 after to 2 we will remove the p0 because after 2 unit quantum time I will remove that process so whenever I will remove that process p1 I will again goes to the circular queue so that is the scenario okay so now the next term the next term p2 next term is p2 next term is the process p2 and now assign the p2 into giant chart and goes for the two unit quantum time and there is only one unit burst time so there is no need of to execute two unit because there is only one unit requirement so just execute four to five four to five remember that why because the worst time is one because there is uh, no two unit time no sufficient worst time equal to your quantum time so that's why i'm running it one unit time one unit time after p2 p2 finally finishes its execution so p2 finally finishes that its execution so i'm removing p2 from the circular queue because p2 is now in the processor and after the time 5 after the time 5 just p2 finish its execution and there is no there is no need to wait for p2 because p2 finally finishes its execution come to the p0 again assign the p0 here p0 and cut here from the circular queue and see this p0 what is p0 p0 is again there is a need of two unit time out of three unit time because the remaining time is three remaining worst time is three and the quantum time is two unit so i will start from the five and five to two seven goes to seven and just what will be the remaining remaining is one three minus two is one so remaining worst time is one so again i will after the seven i will put i will just pick the p0 from the processor and put just in the circular queue to execute next to execute so that's why we call this round robin because so this fashion is the round robin uh, again going to the round and round and round so this p0 p07 again next term is p3 so goes to p3 and see the p3 time again the p3 time is uh, first time is 2 and my quantum time is also 2 and that there is no need to run p3 again and again there is the p2 will run only one time p3 will run only one time 7 to 9 because 2 unit time nine. after 9 so remove the p3 from the circular link and assign into the processor and in the processor p3 will run 7 to 9 and just finish its execution all time so come to the next p4 so just p4 cut the p4 in circular queue and assign p4 here this p4 
and P4 and C, the worst time of P4, worst time of P4 is 3 and I have a quantum of 2. So, I will execute process 2 out of 3. 2 out of 3, 9 to 2, 11 out of 3. So, 3 this 2. So, remaining is 1. Remaining is 1. So, this is very simple procedure. Always just pick the process from the circular queue and put into the giant chart and after and just execute that process according to the quantum and worst time and find out the remaining worst time. So, simple procedure is there. Now, 7 to 9, 9 to 11. Now, again the P1 will execute but P1 and C what is the remaining time of uh, P1? Remaining time of P1 is only 1. See, again see here. Remaining time of P1 is 1. So, P1 will execute only 1 unit time of so 11 to 12. Only 1 unit time, 11 to 12. So, P1 finally finishes its execution. So, remaining time is 0. Remaining time is 0. Or here P2 is remaining time is also 0. And P3 remaining time is also 0. Okay, so come to P0, P4, come to P0, P0 again goes to processor, assigned to the processor and P4 again goes to the processor and P4 remaining time is 1, now from 12 to 13, it will execute from 12 to 13 and now its remaining time will be 0, its remaining time will be 0, so that is the scenario. And after all, after all, there is no, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm just, there is a P0, not P4, P0, I created it P0 and P0 remaining time is also, worst remaining time is also 1. So, I will execute P0 12 to 13 and there is a P4 and P4 remaining time is P4 remaining time is 1, 1, 1 and 1 to 0. 1 to 0, 13 to 14. So, see, this is a giant chart completely and this is a circular queue where the, the order of processes is there and in according to the giant chart, we can find out the turnaround time and waiting time. So, come to the gate questions in your ES or gate questions actually, they just asked about the turnaround time and waiting time. So, what is a turnaround time? Turnaround time formula is a completion time minus arrival time. I am again repeating completion time minus arrival time. What is the meaning of completion time? Completion time meaning P0, finally P0 is completing its execution. So, if you see P0, P0 it's completing its execution at the 13 unit time, at the 13 o'clock. Come to P1, P1 its execution at 12, finally sum up its execution at 12. Come to P2, P2 finally sum up its execution at 5, this is called completion time. So, completion time of P0 equal to 13, completion time of P1 equal to 12, completion time of P2 equal to 5, the boundary line where the process is end up, that is called completion time. So, completion time minus turnaround time, I am calculating the turnaround time of P0 and waiting time of P0. So, turnaround time, completion time, completion time is 13, completion time is 13 minus turnaround time, uh, 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 arrival time, not turnaround, time. arrival time is 0. So, 13 minus 0. So, this number is 13. So, turnaround time is 13. How much time a process is stay in your processor is called turnaround time. And come to that P1, P1 completion time is 12, P1 completion time is 12 minus Arrival time is 1, arrival time is 1 is 11. So, now calculate the P2, P2 completion time is 5, P2 completion time is 5 and arrival time is 2, 5 minus 2 equal to 3 and P3 completion time, so P3 completion time is 9, here P3 is completing, P3 completion time is 9 minus 
arrival time is 3 so this is 6 and p4 completion time p4 completion time is 14 14 minus 4 is 10 so i can calculate the turnaround time so come to the next one is called waiting time waiting time is turnaround time minus bus time so i have listed all turnaround time i have listed all bus time so just i have to subtract 13 minus 5 13 minus 5 i have to subtract 11 minus 3 11 minus 3 i have to subtract 3 minus 1 3 minus 1 i have to subtract 6 minus 2 6 minus 2 i have to subtract 10 minus 3 10 minus 3 so this is my waiting time 8 9 2 4 7 so what is the average waiting time so average waiting time is nothing this is 8 plus 9 plus 2 plus 4 plus 7 divided by a 2 so i can cal calculate the average waiting time also just i can calculate the average turnaround time i just add up all the values of the turnaround time divided by 2 so simply i can calculate the average turnaround time there are these two simple phenomena just asked in gate questions or es questions just calculate the average waiting time or just calculate the uh, average turnaround time so there is a, not a big philosophy there is a very simple philosophy i can calculate it you have always you have to remember these two formula one formula is ct minus at so dear friends there is only two formula of turnaround friends one turnaround philosophy is ct minus at and now the wt is tat minus vt so you have to calculate very simply so in next topics we will see a lot of problems of round robin scheduling algorithms or test job first algorithm so test remaining time algorithms i will cover all the topics in coming lectures for the, this lectures thank you very much